Laura Wallen was a 31-year-old from Olney, Maryland, who was a beloved teacher at Wild Lake High School in Columbia, Maryland. Laura was a very well-liked teacher who enjoyed giving hugs to her students. Laura enjoyed making jewelry and baking. Laura had been dating 33-year-old Tyler Tessier on and off for 10 years. On her social media, Laura referred to him as Cowboy. In June 2017, Laura was invited to go to an out-of-state wedding and was scheduled to go with Tyler. Unfortunately, Tyler stood her up, so Laura broke up with him. When she returned home from the wedding, Laura discovered that she was pregnant. After Tyler found out, Tyler agreed to meet with Laura's dad, Mark. At that meeting, Tyler showed Mark a ring and told him that he was going to propose. Laura had decided to name her baby Reed. Fast forward to the end of summer, Laura was excitedly getting her classroom ready for the first day of school. It was the 5th of September 2017, a Tuesday. 31-year-old Laura Wallen was reported missing by her family. They became concerned about her when they were notified by her employer that she didn't show up for work. Laura was a teacher at Wild Lake High School in Howard County. She loved her job and worked hard at it. She had spent several weeks preparing the work for her classroom in the run-up to the start of the new school year. She was awarded Teacher of the Year in 2016 and couldn't wait for the 2017 school year to start. So when she didn't show up on the first day of the 2017 school term, everyone knew something was wrong. When police carried out a welfare check at her home in Olney, Maryland, United States, there was no sign of her but there was also no indication that she had come to any harm there. Nothing seemed out of place. There was even more reason to be concerned about her disappearance though. Laura was four months pregnant. Police reached out to her boyfriend, Tyler Tessier, and he told them he didn't know where Laura was. A search began. Police found Laura's 2011 Black Ford Escape parked in a gated apartment complex in Columbia. The complex was across from the high school where she worked. Volunteers focused on the area around Howard and Montgomery counties and handed out flyers and put up missing posters. Tyler and Laura's parents took part in a televised news conference so that they could appeal for information and offer a reward. Did anyone see Laura? Tyler spoke at the news conference and told reporters that he knew Laura for around 10 years. He appealed directly to Laura. Laura, if you are listening, it doesn't matter what's happened, it doesn't matter what type of trouble, there's nothing we can't fix together. There are so many people, so many people that miss you, so many people who were out, who haven't slept. We haven't eaten. We are just looking or praying that you are safe. While Tyler pleaded with the public for information about Laura's whereabouts, the police and Laura's family believe they already knew who was responsible for her disappearance, and they believe that individual to be Tyler. Tyler was suspected of being involved in Laura's disappearance by police due to inconsistencies in some of the information he provided, and their decision to allow him to speak at the news conference was calculated. At that point, Laura was a missing person, and the police had no idea what happened to her, or where she was. But after further questioning, Tyler told police that Laura had approached him, and asked for his help. He told police that Laura wanted to disappear, he claimed she told him that the father of her baby was a student of hers and she was embarrassed and worried and needed help before anyone found out about it. Two days after the news conference, on the 13th of September, Laura was no longer a missing person. Police searched the perimeter of a wooded area in Damascus. They were made aware that Tyler visited there and was known to have taken several trips there as of late. They found what appeared to be freshly dug ground in a secluded part of a field there. With the assistance of cadaver dogs, they found Laura's body buried in a shallow grave. The autopsy revealed she had been shot once in the back of the head. Now, police had to figure out when she died, who killed her, and why. 
Police believed that Tyler was the last person to see Laura alive, and with the inconsistencies of accounts he provided of his movements, he was deemed a person of interest. Police knew that Laura was alive on the 1st of September as her family saw her that day. The next day, the 2nd of September, Laura went on a trip with Tyler. The police discovered that Laura sent a text message to her sister on the 2nd of September and told her that Tyler was taking her on an adventure somewhere, but she didn't know where. The text message read, Tyler has me on an adventure in the country. Not sure why but it's for something. Waiting in a field. Aunt Laura's debit card was for a purchase made at a Safeway grocery store near her home in Olney on the 2nd of September between 8.30 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. Police obtained surveillance footage from the grocery store and discovered that when Laura made the purchase, she wasn't alone. Tyler was with her. Police discovered that Tyler was also in a relationship with another woman, and that may have been the motive they were looking for. Laura and Tyler had been involved in an on and off relationship for 10 years but every time they broke up, they got back together again. Their relationship was rocky but Laura was looking forward to having her baby. Despite the account that Tyler gave to police stating that Laura was pregnant with a student's baby, the baby was Tyler's baby. Laura didn't know anything about it, but while they were split apart one of those times, Tyler began dating another teacher and moved in with her in 2012. He remained with her even when he got back with Laura. Neither woman knew about the other woman. When Laura told her family that she was pregnant with Tyler's baby, her father, Mark Wallen, asked Tyler what his intentions were. He was aware of their rocky relationship and there were rumors that there was another woman. Tyler assured Mark that he would look after Laura. He showed Mark an engagement ring and said that he planned to propose to Laura. He told Mark that he had not seen the other woman in two years. Police later found out that the ring Tyler showed Mark was later used by Tyler to propose to the other woman, not Laura. The other woman said yes and their wedding was arranged for just one month after Laura was due to give birth to their baby. While both Laura and the other woman thought that he was dating them exclusively, it became clear, during the investigation, that Laura probably discovered what Tyler had been up to shortly before her death. She sent a text message to the other woman on the 28th of August asking her if she would meet up with her. It's important that some things are cleared up and I would imagine that if you were in my position, you'd want some answers as well. By no means is this an attempt at confrontation, just looking for an explanation, woman to woman. Police believe that within a couple of days of that text message, Tyler began planning Laura's murder. They believed he had convinced the woman that he was living with that Laura was crazy and stalking him. Due to that, when she received the text message from Laura, she told Tyler about it through text, and he replied with a text message that read, I could kill her. Tyler denied that he was in a relationship with anyone other than Laura, to the police, but when confronted with the evidence, he admitted it. Police believed that Tyler took Laura to a remote location to kill her and silence her. She believed that she was going to that spot to look at the land that Tyler wanted to purchase. It was an area he was familiar with and it was a field close to a farm where he worked. When Laura texted her sister about the trip, her sister asked her to take a picture. She did and police matched that picture to the location where her body was found later. Tyler brought her to that location twice, once on the 2nd of September and once the next day. Police believe that Tyler shot Laura on the 3rd of September. He texted a friend that same day and asked for a ride to Baltimore late at night, but the friend declined. He told Tyler it was a bad idea to go to Baltimore late at night. Tyler responded and said, It probably is. Just trying to clean up a mess. Police believe that after he shot Laura dead, Tyler then started hiding evidence and trying to cast doubt as to who the father of Laura's baby was, through text messages to her family members. He sent a text message to her sister from her phone which read, I am like 95% sure Tyler is not the father. I am going to try and get a hold of Antoine. 
Laura's sister was confused by the text. She had a close relationship with Laura and knew that if Laura had any doubt as to who the father of her baby was, she wouldn't say it in a text message. She told police that Laura had dated someone named Antoine about two years before her death but had no contact with him since. Police arrested Tyler and charged him with first-degree murder. He was also charged with obstruction of justice, tampering with evidence, and making false statements. He only received one murder charge due to Maryland law. When police questioned Tyler, he denied being involved or having any knowledge as to what happened to Laura. But then he provided many different accounts of what happened to Laura. He claimed that during an argument on the 4th of September, Laura was deeply upset and crying hysterically. Laura lunged at him with scissors and in the process, she ran into a post on the porch which caused her to collapse on the ground. Tyler thought she was dead so he brought her to the field and buried her. Police asked him if that was the case then why did the autopsy show she had been shot? He told police that he was worried he might have buried her alive, so he went back and fired one round at her, to make sure she was dead, because he didn't want her to suffer. Tyler later changed his story. Tyler told police that African-American men entered Laura's home and kidnapped the two of them. The men forced them to drive to Damascus and Laura was shot there. When asked why he wasn't shot, Tyler said that he pleaded with the men to let him go. The prosecution thought they had a solid case and that there was no doubt that Tyler was responsible for Laura's death. It was their case that after successfully living a double life for several years, Tyler was aware that it was about to end. Laura had found out about everything. After Laura texts the other woman, Tyler planned Laura's murder. He was due to spend the weekend of the 2nd of September with the other woman in Pennsylvania. He was supposed to go with her to look at bridesmaids' dresses. Instead, he told her that he couldn't go on a four-hour drive because he hurt his knee while walking her dog. But there was nothing wrong with his knee. He just had other plans. He arranged to meet Laura and take her on an adventure to a remote field in Damascus in Montgomery County. The prosecution stated that the murder was planned out in advance and that was evident from the location where Laura was killed and buried. They wanted to bring the jury to the location where Laura's body was found. The prosecution believed that jurors would only be able to fully understand what Tyler was accused of by seeing exactly how remote the location was and walking the same path he took with Laura. They would then be able to see that the location was not just remote but hidden too. It would also show, they argued, and that the murder was a premeditated one. They also wanted to show jurors KS Cuts, an animal processing facility, that is close to the field where Laura was found. A skid loader was on the property at the time, and the prosecution believed Tyler used it to dig the shallow grave for Laura's body. Laura's front license plate and her cell phone were found by staff in a dumpster on the property. The prosecution was worried that photographs were not enough to show the jury just how hidden the field was. They believed that to choose that location, somebody must know the area well. They had an aerial image of the site with a photo of a tree line at the site and of Laura seated in a truck at the site. Laura had sent her sister a picture of herself when her sister asked, and the location was the same as where her body was found. The prosecution planned to show the jury the phone records for both Tyler and Laura, which placed them at the location where Laura's body was found. The prosecution planned to tell the jury that after Tyler buried Laura's body, he drove Laura's car to the apartment complex in Columbia where it was later found. The prosecution was prepared to call witnesses. It was believed that Tyler asked a friend to lie to the police if they ever asked him about picking him up from that apartment complex. Prosecutors were seeking a sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole if Tyler was convicted, but the prosecution would never get the chance to prove their case before a jury. On the 6th of September 2018 at 5 a.m., just hours before the trial was to start, Tyler's body was found in his cell. He took his own life by a noose inside his jail cell at the Montgomery County Correctional Facility in Rockville, Maryland. 
He left behind five letters on the top of his bunk bed. Bruce Goldfarb, of Maryland's Office of the Chief Medical Examiner, said, The cause of death was hanging, and he had taken his own life. The toxicology showed no drugs or alcohol in his system. Montgomery County State's attorney John McCarthy said the letters indicated that he had been considering taking his own life for a while and that the family was robbed of their justice.